You hear that quantum technologies are revolutionizing various sectors from computing to communication and have the potential to solve complex problems that classical systems can't. But the big question I get now is why invest in quantum technologies now? Haven't you been promising this for decades? Aren't the problems just toy problems that have no meaning? Will we ever get to 10,000 qubits, let alone the 10 million to break encryption? So in this first part of the series, I want to cover the post-quantum security ecosystem. In my opinion, this is the place where you will see, and are seeing already, the earliest, quickest impact. It's now. It's not exactly using quantum mechanics itself, because post-quantum cryptography uses classical mathematic methods to encrypt still, but it's needed to protect against the quantum computing threat. Quantum cryptography is a whole different bag. We are also seeing many real-world applications and use cases in quantum simulations, even using classical simulators, before large-scale quantum computers arrive. Car companies, pharmaceutical companies, financial companies, even F1, now have quantum computing teams devoted to figuring out how the industry can impact them. And they have real wins. But that's for another video, so make sure you like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when the next video comes out. All right, let's dive deeper into the security side. If you're wondering why quantum security matters when a large quantum computer doesn't even exist yet to break that encryption, here's the rationale. As of July 2023, almost two thirds of the world population, so that's 5.2 billion people, are using the internet. This number is only going up. We expect around 38.6 billion devices connected to the internet by 2025 and 50 billion by 2030. So the stakes are high, folks. The sheer volume of connected devices and people presents a goldmine for potential quantum attacks. And one of the key takeaways here is that waiting is not an option. Large scale quantum computers are already on the horizon, and once they become mainstream, they could use Shor's algorithm to break RSA and elliptic curve cryptography, two forms of encryption we rely on today. And these algorithms underpin our entire digital infrastructure, from sending emails to processing financial transactions. But maybe you say, that's so far away. The 2030s, it doesn't really matter now. Actually, it took 10 years to replace elliptic curve from RSA last time for compliance. That's why the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, began standardizing post-quantum cryptography, or PQC, back in 2016. The goal of this project is to develop public key cryptographic algorithms that can protect sensitive government information, even after the beginning of quantum computing. They knew it was coming, and it would take time to develop the standards, not to mention and transition our entire digital infrastructure to them. So these regulatory bodies and governments are setting the pace, even helping to fund the quantum computing technologies through academic grants and industry investments. So replacing this foundation is urgent and really lucrative. In the USA in 2022, President Biden announced two directives to advance quantum technologies. The directives lay the groundwork for continuing funding quantum computing and related technologies, while also drawing awareness and creating funding for mitigating the risks that quantum computers pose to our security. So we're continuing continuing to build up larger and larger quantum ships, but also look at the security side. And speaking of regulation, in the US alone, federal agencies are required to set and meet those specific milestones in upgrading their cryptographic systems. So they're already planning their transition timelines. Organizations like Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, the NSA and NIST, are creating fact sheets to assist companies in their transition to quantum safe encryption. So that urgency is really clear and the planning is already underway. These directives require federal agencies agencies to upgrade the cryptographic systems and start planning their transition timelines. The National Security Memorandum provides a roadmap for agencies to audit their systems, so they're required to set and meet those milestones. And the government may also mandate data storage and processing requirements under new PQC guidelines. For example, sensitive or national security related data may have to remain within the borders and be encrypted using approved PQC algorithms. So updating security is not easy, so starting early is the key for data that can be exploited for use years or or decades in the future. So NIST is expected to release a set of compliance checks that organizations can use as a guide to self-assess their quantum readiness. And it's really highly likely that third-party audits will become mandatory, especially for organizations involved in critical infrastructure, healthcare, or national defense. And to encourage that quick adoption, the government may offer tax benefits or grants to companies that can demonstrate concrete steps towards becoming quantum ready. Organizations that fail to comply might face financial penalties or be disqualified from bidding on government contracts. And that's that seems to be hinted at in the fact sheet, given that they're saying to audit and prepare to replace non-compliant vendors. And the investment numbers, according to McKinsey, also speak volumes. So in 2022, a staggering 2.35 billion was invested in quantum technologies. China and the European Union are making significant investments too. Venture capitalists and private equity investors are increasingly focused on quantum security, especially in these highly regulated industries like defense, aerospace, infrastructure, and finance. And on the financial side, there's a huge market 
market potential. A report by BCG suggests that the cryptography's value creation could range from 40 to 80 billion for corporate and government applications. And this isn't just theoretical. Organizations aren't spending money on quantum security for fun. So who stands to gain? Companies developing quantum resistant tools. That's who. Quantum first startups can take a significant market share by being pioneers. And crypto agility, yes, it's an industry term now, is another game changer. It refers to the ability to adapt to new cryptographic algorithms and methods efficiently, positioning quantum first entities as leaders in the market and setting themselves up to not need to be replaced if new algorithms will replace the ones that NIST releases in the first standard. So that's a huge opportunity. While the cryptographic protocols themselves will need to be open source, because trust me, no one will ever trust a closed source cryptographic system, the services and tools built around this technology are a huge potential for new businesses. Those big businesses often lag behind due to slower development cycles and may lack the knowledge and talent in quantum computing. Early adopters combining teams from physics, mathematics, cryptography, and modern code development can position themselves as trusted authorities for quantum security solutions. This creates a great foundation for partnerships, licensing agreements, and even acquisitions, allowing these quantum-focused companies to grow and really solidify their market presence as the new blue-chip companies of the quantum era. Focusing on those early adopters in critical infrastructure, healthcare, and national security. And for those of you who are wondering about blockchain and cryptocurrencies, they too are entering a transitional phase. Current blockchain technologies are secure against classical attacks, but vulnerable to quantum computation. So innovations are underway to make blockchains quantum resistant, keeping them relevant and secure for the long term. Ethereum has just released in September 2023, the beginning of a roadmap for quantum resistance. The BLS signature scheme is used in its proof of stake protocol. While BLS is highly efficient for aggregating votes on valid blocks, it's vulnerable to quantum attacks. Also, the KZG commitment schemes employed in Ethereum are also quantum resistant. No, they're quantum sensitive. Also, the KZG also the KZG schemes in also, the KGZ schemes employed in Ethereum are also quantum sensitive, though this is really being mitigated right now through trusted setups involving multiple users. So to truly future-proof Ethereum, developers are investigating Stark-based and Lattice-based signing mechanism. Though that's still in the research and prototyping phase, these quantum resistant algorithms have potential to replace BLS and KZG. Some blockchains are building quantum first, where they're already incorporating new post-quantum encryption into the blockchain. So the progress in quantum computing in recent years really shows that need for secure quantum resistance solutions. And some people believe that the government, always the government, nobody ever says which one, just the, that they already have a large enough quantum computer or backdoors to break encryption, so upgrading really can't come fast enough. We don't and shouldn't wait for a large enough quantum computer because it's really gonna be too late. So if you're looking into quantum security for your business, feel free to reach out to me on my website to discuss post-quantum security solutions. All the links will be in the description below. There are a lot of other fields of quantum technologies that are getting getting attention and already showing impact. Quantum computing is not the only subfield, and just because we don't have million qubit chips yet doesn't mean that quantum security has no benefits. Artificial intelligence is the hottest new thing in technology right now, but my next guest says there's something else we should be paying attention to. Quantum computing.